This is the Yoshimura family, with son Shigenori and daughter Miki. They all lead a busy life, so Sundays are one of the few days they can all relax together. On their way back to the city, they often do some shopping. The Japanese spend a larger part of their income for food than people in most industrialized nations. The Yoshimuras live in an apartment owned by the company for which Mr. Yoshimura works. This restaurant delivery man is bringing part of their dinner for tonight, and Mrs. Yoshimura is cooking the rest. The Japanese prepare some special foods, which are nicely presented. But most of their meals are similar to Chinese cooking. Tonight, noodle soup was requested by son Shigenori. <laughs> Either before or after dinner, the family takes their daily bath. They shower first and then soak in a deep, very hot tub for as long as an hour. Miki and her brother spend two or three hours every evening doing homework. Only the best students are accepted in the most popular universities. So, even at Miki's age, students are encouraged to work for university acceptance. Miki's parents sleep on grass floor mats. But Miki and her brother have modern furniture and their own bedrooms. Early each morning, Mr. Yoshimura walks to a nearby train station and, like many Japanese, travels for an hour to the factory where he works. Most other countries have a mixture of people from different regions and with different traditions. But here in Japan, the people Mr. Yoshimura works with are all of the same race, speak the same language, have the same religion and same traditions. Being similar in so many ways, it's not as important to them to be different as to be loyal to the group. They respect loyalty to the family, their school, the people they work with, their company, and their government. Companies are loyal to their workers, offering them lifetime employment. Much of Japan's industrial success is due to this sense of loyalty between workers and companies. As an island nation, Japan's industrial success also depends upon shipping. Ships carry the products of Japan's factories to all parts of the world. The ships return bringing new products and especially more raw materials for Japan's factories. This ship has arrived from Malaysia, bringing a cargo of iron ore. The iron ore will be taken to giant foundries to be melted and refined into iron and steel. This modern foundry requires few employees because most of the work is controlled by computers. In this control room, the workers are all university graduates. One of the main problems for Japan's industry 
is that it requires so much energy to produce their products. Japan must import fuels for energy, buying from other countries the oil, coal, and nuclear fuels so necessary for its industry and for its people. Years ago, these energy fuels could be imported cheaply, but now they are very expensive. Japan makes most of the world's largest ships, and they are also world leaders in making the smallest parts for transistorized radios, television, computers, and cameras. The Japanese are well educated, especially in mathematics and the sciences. They are easily trained for the highly skilled jobs of designing and making scientific instruments. These electron microscopes will be sold to universities in all parts of the world for scientific research. Workers are paid bonuses twice each year as a share of the company's profits. They often work long hours but as they earn more, they can buy more. There is not much room in their homes for big purchases, such as furniture. So they buy mostly appliances, electronics, and clothing. Part of their money is usually placed into bank savings. The average Japanese saves two or three times as much money as the average American or European. After the destruction of World War II, Japan had almost no housing left in its cities. As people rebuilt, no one had the time or money to worry about building restrictions, wide streets or sidewalks, pollution control, proper sewage, safety rules, or community planning. Ever since, homes and shops have been crowded, the streets crowded, and the parking lots at each train station are crowded. Workers travel for an hour or more in crowded trains to reach their jobs in crowded cities. Japan's great industrial success has brought it wealth, but also pollution and congestion. The Japanese have recognized their problems and have already started with massive programs to correct them. They have greatly reduced the pollution from automobiles. Old factories are being replaced with modern ones. This new computerized steel mill cost millions of dollars. It doesn't produce any more steel than the old one, but it has eliminated the air pollutants. In this unit, poisonous gases and solids that used to pollute the air are now chemically changed into useful products. For the past hundred years, while America and Europe have been developing highways for automobiles, Japan has been developing its train system. The longest and first monorail train system in the world is in Tokyo and is powered by electricity. The world's fastest train and one of the most comfortable is in Japan. It travels more than 120 miles an hour connecting the main industrial centers of Japan. It's only recently that an excellent highway system has been built throughout Japan to handle the increased traffic. Now, almost every family owns a car. The Japanese have brought themselves from wartime defeat and destruction to become one of the world's richest nations. 
How are their traditions of respect for family, education, and work helping them to succeed 